I want to throw up this chart that kind of builds on the theme that uh, Sophie was talking about, this sudden sort of optimism, and I don't know whether it's just part of the renaissance because we were so oversold in the EM space at one point, but this chart looking at, you know, if you're basing it on the 200-day moving average, it does appear that we could have further upside when it comes to emerging markets, uh, stocks and also currencies. I mean, you look at a map and you could kind of throw a dart and hit an EM that is grappling with, with unrest and turmoil. So why are we seeing the upside at the moment? I think this year emerging markets have seen an awful lot of choppiness. That's based off the trade wars fears that we've been dealing with over the last 18 months. There's hope that we move to a phase one deal towards the end of this year. That could provide support going into next year for emerging markets. There's also hope that the, the dollar continues to, to depreciate a little bit versus emerging market currencies, which would help emerging markets into next year. Earnings growth is very strong uh, for emerging markets next year. And some of the risk is perhaps overstated, particularly in the the, uh, the more established emerging markets. Um, India is starting to see more positive growth after a softer year, and that could be uh, a particularly uh, positive market for next year. Yeah, China is really the bellwether, though, right? And, and even if we do have a, a phase one mini deal, if you will, even if we have more uh, fiscal monetary stimulus, you're still dealing essentially with, with you know, so much growth. And now we are in a structural as well as a cyclical slowdown. I mean, does that, as as a bellwether for the rest of the EM complex, trouble you? So um, uh, China has had 6% growth at its latest print. That's continuing to, to track down. I think that's well within expectations. It's not just about the headline level of China growth. It's about the composition of that growth. And it's been well flagged that China is rebalancing from investment-led to consumption-led. So I would encourage people to, to look more selectively within uh, China for the, the stories that they're getting exposure to, not just at the, the index or headline level of Chinese growth. Services sectors are particularly strong within China. So uh, the internet stocks continue to compound their growth. The education still sector like is strong. still like Tencent, still like Alibaba. These names, despite multi-year growth stories, are still finding new avenues for their growth, uh, their payments businesses, their cloud businesses, as well as their core e-commerce and gaming businesses are, are showing um, multi-year growth stories um, that are now at re-rated or sorry, derated levels. Um, so uh, long-term investors can take advantage of this uh, opportunity. We have seen some stability in the Chinese yuan as well. This GTV chart on the Bloomberg showing how volatility in the yuan fixing set by the government has in fact declined to the lowest level since 2011. This, of course, after the Chinese yuan broke that seven level. So would this give some upside to those, say, Chinese exporters? And would you consider owning some of them, given that a cheaper Chinese yuan could be of advantage for them? I think China have been clear, uh, particularly going into this phase one deal, they're not going to depreciate the yuan too much further. Uh, that would be good for them competitively on exports, but I'm not sure the US would tolerate for a too much further depreciation on the yuan. I think the domestic story is really where we're at in China. China, let's not forget, has a huge population to, to deliver on that domestic story, to grow retail sales. The retail sales market in China is now much larger than the US. Um, that overtook the US retail sales market market a couple years back, um, and the, the growing wealth of the Chinese populace uh, continues to be a very, very positive story, much more stable on the longer term than, than trading in and out of exporters.